Here's Brody Brazil. A couple days ago, head coach Bob Bugner and his entire staff were dismissed by the Sharks. Now, I just want to look back and give you some perspective here because, in my opinion, Bob and his guys were facing an uphill battle literally since the day they took over in December of 2019. You remember the playoffs of 19, so the season prior to that, the Sharks had to barely get past the Golden Knights in that Game 7, that magical Game 7, and then they they get past uh, Colorado in Round 2, and they go all the way to Round 3. It was a really good start in that series, the conference final against St. Louis, but the Sharks ultimately lost there to the Blues. So going into the 2019-20 campaign, there was a lot of optimism about taking another step forward. Uh, this group had kind of galvanized in the prior season. I know we use that word a lot, and it just did not start off that way at all. Things started to unravel at the beginning of the 1920 season. December, head coach Pete DeBoer gets fired. Bob Bugner takes over and unfortunately kind of unravels even further from there. Now, this season only went 70 games for the Sharks because, as we're all aware, in March of 2020, the pandemic stopped everything. I'm not here to say at all that those final missed 12 games by the Sharks would have been anything magical. Um, I, yeah, every team had, well, their season cut short until the bubble came back in Toronto and Edmonton, but <clears throat> the pandemic there at that point had nothing to do with the shark struggles. It just ended their season early. It ended a season that was getting uglier sooner. But in that season, things kind of fell apart. And I, I want to say this overall. For Bob Bugner, the moment he was brought on, it was never a turnkey gig. What do I mean by that? When the Sharks hired Todd McClellan, there was pretty much a team in place there to, to get you to the playoffs. And it was up to Todd to squeeze every last ounce of them to get them as far as they could possibly go. Ultimately, a couple of conference finals, and that was it. And the same thing with Pete DeBoer. When he was brought in, it was a group that was turnkey. Turnkey for the playoffs, turnkey for success. And he got them in his first season to the Stanley Cup final, the farthest they'd ever been. But when Bob Bugner came in, I'm not sure you can say that team was turnkey to go to the playoffs. Yeah, it had a couple really compelling names, but overall the team and the way it was and the way it was structured and then every season after that, I'm not sure you can hold Bob Bugner up to the same standards that you did a Todd McClellan, a Pete DeBoer, honestly, any of the recent Sharks head coaches. It just was not the same. And I'm not here to make excuses or make this a, you know, a sad song for Bob Bugner, but I'm just saying it was uphill the entire time. COVID challenges. Now, the prior season, well, I should say his first season taking over, that ended early. But the next year, not 2020-21, it was really just the 2021 season, started late, right? Started in mid-January. The Sharks were on the road for almost like two entire months. And during that time, because of all the restrictions here in the Bay Area, they couldn't even do things like have team meetings. And look, <laughs> the pandemic was raging. Nobody was vaccinated. There was a lot going on in the world. I'm not here to even talk about that part of it. I'm only singling out the aspect of difficult to run a hockey team that already had some issues, and now you can't even see people face-to-face -to, -face to try and gain some steam, gain some ground, and move forward. A tough assignment during the pandemic for every team, no doubt, but especially for the San Jose Sharks. Speaking of tough, how about the Evander Kane situation? And I have seen some comments out there that say, well, if you're the head coach, you know, you're the person that's supposed to smooth these things over. It shouldn't be an issue between Evander Kane and his teammates. If you were doing a good job, you know, you could make that a non-problem. I'm here to tell you that is beyond a head coach. I mean, small things, yeah, you can patch those. Big things, like apparently this obviously was. How many sports teams ever don't bring back their top scorer, one of their, their biggest offensive players from the prior season, they're not even basically welcome back. It, it just goes to show you, and we don't know the extent of the details or what exactly is going on, but the message is clear without the shark saying it. He just was not welcome back. But ultimately, that goes back to the coach because the coach has one less, I don't know, tool in their shed, tool in their bag. You don't have a 30-plus goal score at your disposal anymore. 
So all of that goes back to reflect on the coach. And I say, you know, the, it's not the coach's job to, to keep the team together. I mean, you know, in general aspects, yeah, a coach is a leader, leader by example, person that's working on team chemistry as much as strategy or anything else. But that's like saying that the coach is ultimately the only one responsible for motivating the players every single time. If they can't do that as professionals, something's wrong with the team greater than just the head coach. And that's the Sharks. That's pretty much any team across the board. Okay, so those are the main things I want to say about Bob Bugner and, and the dismissal of his staff as well, too. But I also want to give you some evaluations looking back. A coaching staff that, in my opinion, was always prepared. Now, Preparation, execution, two totally different things. Being prepared and having the ability to execute on that preparation, I think that was the gap for the Sharks. Granted, there's a lot of teams that you look back and say, I'm not sure they were ready for that one. Or the coaching staff didn't put them in a position to succeed. And I cannot say that I ever observed that with Bugner and his staff in San Jose. Because I think there were a lot of things that were clear to see, clear directions, um, if any indication of how he talked to the players could be made in how he talked to the media, how he talked to all of us, it, you know, he's not a confusing person. There's not a whole lot of like, I don't understand you. Clear communicator. That's probably what I should have said instead. Um, and that goes a long way with players to know what to expect out of them, to know how they, where they stand, what their role is going to be, how to get through tough times, all of that. And transparency is a huge part of it too. I mean, let's be honest, with the amount of losing the Sharks had been doing in the last couple of years, he had plenty of opportunities to get in there and rip his team after games. But he didn't do that, hardly ever. In fact, he was more you know, productive in being straightforward than he was being emotional. And it's fine to get emotional, but um, <clears throat> you know, I think you get, a lot, you get a lot farther with your players when you are more cerebral with it than anything else. But he was transparent with them. And I think that was pretty clear to see. It was appreciated. And I think it was that transparency, really what you saw. And even with the Sharks team that lost seven in a row and then lost like 10 in a row uh, at, the, at the end of the season there, he kept them from truly coming apart because he was so transparent with them. And that brings me to the last thing I'll say here about Bugner and his coaching staff. You know, I think their dismissal is just the, you know, it's the effect of a fresh coat of paint. And a new GM is coming in. We now know that's official starting tomorrow, whether it's Mike Greer, whether it's somebody else. The dismissal here is not to say, well, you guys didn't do a good job at all, or you were bad, or you, or you held our team back. I think it's literally just to say that our entire franchise is moving in different directions. We want this fresh start. It has less to do about the coaches than it does to do about you know new scenery for who's here and what we're trying to do moving forward. So, and you know, that's an unfortunate part of being a head coach in any sporting situation, any team, any league. I'll be honest with you. Broadcasters face this too. <laughs> Broadcasters have nothing to do with games. They have some things, a lot of things to do with teams. And sometimes teams want a fresh coat of paint. They want their audience to hear and see something different. So that is basically, you know, if I'm boiling it down, and, and look, Bugner and his staff, they had to know that as soon as Doug Wilson, you know, stepped away for medical reasons, um, that nothing was certain anymore about their standing. Despite a contract, despite anything else, nothing was certain anymore. And so their, their alerts, their red flags had to, have, had to have been going off now for months. So I don't, I don't, I think the timing maybe of of when their termination took place just a couple days ago might have caught, caught them off guard. But again, I think what Joe Will said the other day, you know, they didn't know who maybe who they were going with from a GM perspective and what that person wanted to do. And they wanted to keep Bugner. They, they probably sided with, you know, for now, this makes sense for us. Let's see who the new person is, what they want to bring in. Clearly, the next person has their own people that they want to bring in, or they've got something specific in mind. 